What's happening guys? Welcome back to the channel. For today's video, we're going to be checking out the Transformers Studio Series 86 Leader Class Dinobots now. Our first 86 movie release for 2023 and they are definitely back with a bang. You know, this is our fourth Dinobot member. Only one remains and they have just been hit after hit after hit. But Snarl alongside Grimlock, I think may just be some of the best engineered figures that we've seen out of this subline. So here we have him in the robot mode. You know, first of all, I want to start with some kind of big wide shots of the figure because if you compare this to the actual character design from the original G1 series, it's actually pretty freaky and uncanny. And in particular, when we come here to the back, you know, recently, you guys may have noticed I've began to speak more and more about the back of Transformers. And it's because I think they've just gotten so good in hiding some of that excess alt mode kibble. You know, previously with some of the past Null figures, you'd always get the dino legs here on the sides of the robot mode legs. But with this one, absolutely not. The same could be said, you know, for kind of the junk that you'd usually see around the waist. It just cleans up so nicely done. And you know what? This is a pretty immaculate looking bot mode. So as we take a look here at the back, you can see these pieces, the tail of the Stegosaurus has just been painted and sculpted so nicely. They even filled this in, you know, three or four years ago, this would more than likely be hollowed. So that's really nice. We get the same amount of kind of sculpted in surface detail as you see with some of the past Dinobots. I know some of you guys aren't too keen on that, but personally, I love it. I think it looks so cool here for the head. Super tune accurate, you know, in some ways kind of reminds me of Lord Farquaad from the Shrek movies. Let me know down below if you guys guys also see the similarities but this hasn't just been sculpted from the front it's been sculpted from the side as well as here from the back so really nice attention to detail I love the chest you know big thick red and bulky much like we saw from sludge and slug so that's really sweet some decent paint here for the chest the proportions for this one appear to be pretty much on point as well and you know what the entire upper body barely has any hollow pieces on it at all it's really nicely filled out I think the thighs look great you know no ugly waffling here for the inside we do unfortunately get quite a big gaping hole here for the base of the foot you know it would have been sweet had they added an additional panel but due to the way this guy transforms I think that maybe would have been a bit tricky and undeniably DNA design are fast at work in giving us some kind of fill out panel so this will definitely be filled in within the next six months I think but even the inside of the leg check that out really nice internal circuitry detail you won't even see this piece in dyno mode so that is just such a sweet touch I like the kind of stegosaurus spikes that we have here flaring out for the shins and even the soles of the feet too fully detailed so just an amazing immaculate looking figure really impressive now articulation wise snow has a wicked ball joint you know this can go all the way around very nice clicky ratchet joints going forwards and backwards i miss the days where leader class just as a standard would always have ratchet so it's great to see them carried over again here for the dinobots we get a nice hinge joint going out to the side as well as a bicep rotation single jointed elbow but that can bend slightly past 90 and if you use the transformation joint then bang there you go you've got a superb curl and again nice internal detail i think that's really sweet we also get a bit of wrist rotation, which is decent due to there being no excess kind of kibble on the back. A wicked waist rotation. I mean, that can go the full 360 completely unhindered. And unlike sludge, some really heavy duty hip ratchet joints. So, you know, these can click forwards that far, which is so cool. They can also click all the way back, which is even better. And also can hinge out to the side. Maybe it would have been cool had we got a ratchet joint here. But this is super stiff, you know. Again, not loose like what we saw with sludge, which is wicked. Nice thigh rotation. Very clean heavy duty ratcheted knee which you'll get roughly 90 out of and then finally for the ankles these can bend to a wicked range although unlike Grimlock it would have been cool had they added some kind of filler piece so that it wasn't just a dead straight clean cut but when you do hinge this out look at that some very nice mechanical surface detail which again you're not going to be seeing when we get this guy into dino mode now if i cast your minds back to some of the past dinobots one of the biggest issues that i think many collectors had was that all of them came with their blasters and not their swords well snarl is actually the exception he comes with a sword and not a blaster but to be fair i'm almost certain that in the show he used to shoot kind of laser beams out of the tip of this so i'm not going to complain all that much very nicely detailed you know paintwork wise is immaculate too painted front to back super shiny metallic silver it is a little pliable you know there's definitely a bit of flex to the plastic but i think it's going to hold its shape it's not that type of plastic that i can imagine warping over time so that's sweet you know you can peg it into the hand of the figure or alternatively you can come around here to the back there's a massive juicy mech tech port that we can just smack that into so yeah weapon storage isn't too bad on this guy either 
Now here for some robot mode comparisons, we have the Leader Snarl on the left and the previous mainline version, that being the Power of the Primes Deluxe on the right. And what an evolution. I mean, if you were to hand this to me and say that in a couple of years time, this would be the next step in the evolution chain for mainline Snarl, I'd think you would absolutely bonkers as this really does look like a masterpiece in comparison. The engineering has just come on so much in the past couple of years. But yeah, I thought it would just be, you know, interesting to compare the two. Of course, this is a Deluxe, so perhaps it's a slightly unfair comparison, but pretty impressive. Here we have him alongside the Studio Series Leader Class Grimlock, Slug, Sludge, Earthrise Optimus Prime, Studio Series Voyager Retgar, 86 Movie Voyager Ironhide, Voyager Class Hot Rod, and here finally, trying my best to cram all of them here into the review station, we have the entire Studio Series 86 Dinobot lineup so far, with the exception of Swoop, which is just going to complete the team, and I mean, like I said previously, what a collection. There really isn't a bad one out of the bunch. They all look so cool, and to be quite honest, besides maybe a masterpiece, I don't see how Hasbro is ever going to top these figures. And so now for transformation, you know, much like some of the past Dinobots, I definitely think there's kind of a similarity between the way this guy transforms and how he actually transforms in the show, which is a pretty sweet nod by the designers. But first of all, what I like to do is come around here to the back, take this section here, detach it here at point A, and then detach it at point B. So just extend that all the way upwards. We can now take the head, this will just compress in that hollow cavity and then flip this section forwards. And now the dino tail actually locks in here for robot mode. So you'll just gently want to detach those tabs and do the same here for this side. And as I'm sure you guys would expect, just combine them. We'll then come here to the chest piece. Now this does actually lift upwards. You can see it's held in for a tiny tab and slot. You'll want to make sure that this is elevated throughout transformation as these toes are actually going to end up inside. I mean, how crazy is that? These are going to end up in there. Really cool transformation. Trust me, you're going to be pretty impressed. What we're then going to want to do is come here to this bicep joint and just detach it from the shoulder. Now this tap is going to peg into that slot. So hinge this here all the way up until it does snap into place. We can now take what will become the back legs of the dyno and just hinge these sections down, detach the foot, and then rotate this around so that it is then flush with what I would imagine would be the shin of the dyno leg. So bring that down just to allow for enough clearance so that we can take the bot mode hand and just rotate it into that hollow cavity, then take the entire arm and rotate this here backwards, mainly to get it out of the way, but that will be its position for dyno mode anyhow. Do the exact same here for this side, so detach that, bring this section here upwards, snap this section here into place, take the dyno toe and detach it. These are actually held in there pretty securely to be fair, so just pull that out, rotate this around, and again, make sure that toe is flush with what will become the shin bring this here backwards so that we can take the hand, rotate that into that cavity and just snap it in, rotate this piece here backwards. Now some pretty cool steps would include taking the torso and grabbing the legs and basically extending this upwards 2007 movie jazz style, which I thought was pretty cool. I like that. He's on a slider joint and it reveals some pretty nice kind of internal details, which you won't see in dyno mode. So solely just here for transformation, you'll now want to rotate the waist so that the front is now facing the back and a crucial step of the transformation, which you cannot miss. Otherwise, it's going to screw a lot of things up later on would be to take the thighs and the lower part of the leg. Now this who's on a slider joint, only this one works forwards and backwards instead of up and down. So what I mean is you're going to want to apply a bit of pressure this way and basically just shoot this tiny little piece here out of the thigh. This makes combining the two halves of the leg in dyno mode way easier. So definitely make sure you complete that step. Do the same here for this side. So grab this one and again, just click it there into place. We can now spin around here to the back. Take this, make sure that this is actually snapped in as we're going to rotate this piece here outwards. These are the front of the dyno legs. So extend that out take the toe, fold this out, and then this slot is going to peg into that tab. So bring this here all the way around, snap it there into place. You're going to want to make sure that for the rest of the transformation, you leave these pieces flared out and do the exact same here for this side. So snap that in, bring this out, take the leg again, extend it forwards, flip out the toe, and that slot is going to peg into that tab. So snap that section in as well and now comes a pretty challenging aspect of the conversion so first of all 
fold down the robot mode hose and then ratchet here at the knee joints. I'd say roughly to 90 as we're now going to take this front shin piece, detach it and this is where one half of the dino head stores which I thought was pretty cool. We're then going to flip this section here all the way out and then just keep clicking that knee joint backwards so that this piece can sit flush alongside what was originally the top of the knee. So just rest that there. This tab is then going to peg into that slot so snap that in. Do the same here for this side, so ratchet those knees, take this shin piece, detach it, and then take the head and flip this here all the way up, and then just snap that in. Now we can combine the two halves, so make sure that everything is lined up properly. So snap all of that there into place. The jaw is a separate piece, so you're going to want to make sure too that those are nice and clipped in. And now it's just a matter of basically folding the knee joints in upon themselves. So fold those all the way in until they won't go no further. Again, make sure this chest piece is elevated as we're gonna tuck these toes in. So now is where we're gonna compress that joint back in. So I'll show you what it looks like here from the underside. As you can see, it's extended. So you'll just wanna shoot it all the way back in just like that. And there are some tiny little slots here on the top of the toes that are gonna peg into these tabs. So just snap those in on both sides. We can now take this piece. You're gonna to wanna to fold those in. These tabs are gonna peg into those slots. I'd recommend folding this one in first as it does have the tab. And then this piece has the cutout which will go over the top. So just lock that in nice and securely and do the same here for this side. If a few things do become untabbed again, you know, just give it a good old squeeze. It should sort everything more or less out. We can then take these pieces here, fold those down on both sides. And then for some finishing touches, these two tabs here are gonna slide into these two slots which were originally the bot mode chest piece. So just snap those in there and bang, there we have Snarl fully transformed up into his pretty tune accurate looking Stegosaurus, you know. The transformation, there is a lot of compression that goes on with this guy. He's quite a tall robot, but it turns into this pretty compact almost block. Now when I first saw it, I thought maybe it was slightly too squat, you know, slightly too squished together, but again, much like the robot mode, appears to be pretty accurate to how he appeared in the animation, and I really think it's all got to do with how you pose the legs. You know, if you have the legs kind of straightened out, then it does make the tail look a little strange, but if you hunch them forward to how they were in the series everything does work out pretty nicely i really like the gold detail that we have here for the spikes and you know despite them being made out of a slightly more pliable material they are not going to warp but it's still pretty firm they can hold their position which i thought was decent very nice sculpt work here that all looks really cool and especially as we come to the tail that looks awesome really like the details these are blast effect compatible you know i do believe he used to eject some kind of electric bursts out of these back in the series so i'll be sure to showcase how that looks but the rear legs look pretty decent Again, very chunky. I like the sides of the dino. You can see some of that kind of circuitry detail, which is carried over from the bot mode. My only issue here with the dino mode would be the lack of paint. And you know what? To be fair, the figure across the board has quite a bit of paint, but I just wish maybe they would have took it a little bit further because he does kind of stick out, especially where the head and these legs are concerned alongside the other dino bots because their heads were all painted in gold. And the same could be said for their legs and toes where they did have gold pieces. So it is a shame that it is just gold plastic. I mean, it doesn't look bad, but like I said, it doesn't really keep the unity like we saw with the previous Dinobots. The front of the head looks pretty cool, I will say, you know, it is comprised out of two pieces, so there's always going to be a little bit of gappage. On my copy, it kind of has a tendency to part. I'm not too sure if I'm maybe doing something wrong, but we do get a nice Autobot logo, as well as a really kind of beady looking blue eye. The jaw can open which reveals some very kind of subtle teeth detail. No blast effect port here in the mouth because like I said, I think he used the tail as his primary weapon in the series. But you know what? Articulation here for the front legs isn't too bad. They're on a very stiff ball joint, hinge joint here at the front of the toe and the same kind of ratchet joint that you'd get out of the shoulder in the robot mode. And of course the hinges out of these feet. Now in terms of weapon storage, if we flip him here to the underside and look at that, unlike Sludge, no big, ugly, obvious gaping hole. He does actually come together pretty nicely, but there are two little tabs here that are just going to peg into the slots on the base of the sword. So just to showcase how that looks, if this was a legacy figure, I guess this would be his Evo fusion capability, but snap that in, 
And yeah, pretty convincing form of weapon storage, again, much better than what we saw from Sludge. Now for some comparisons in Dino Mode, we again have him alongside that deluxe class version that we saw released for Power of the Primes, so a massive difference in both terms of scale and movie or cartoon accuracy. Again, quite impressive, you know, the evolution of Snarl to think this was our last version and then this is the next one, I mean, what a glow up. Here he is alongside a fellow studio series leader, that being Sludge, which is pretty massive. It's going to be quite difficult to convey the scale of these Dinobots, but hopefully that does it. So there is a side by side between Snarl and Sludge. Here he is alongside Dinobot Slug. Just so you guys can see how these two roughly fare next to each other. Here he is alongside the King, and again, that head just won't stay closed. I'm not sure if I'm doing something wrong, but here is what they look like from a side by side. And trying my best once again to give you guys that entire Studio Series Dinobot lineup so far, where you have Snarl alongside the rest of them. Now, they look great as a team, but like I said previously, I think it's quite unfortunate that the budget didn't quite stretch so that they could paint the head and the legs in the same metallic gold that we're seeing from Grimlock, Sludge, and Slug, because these pieces, unfortunately, do kind of stick out like a sore thumb. I mean, had they been gold, I think as a kind of unified team, they would have looked much cooler. But, you know, in terms of some updated Dinobots, these are undeniably the best versions we've ever seen produced. And like I said Previously, in a couple of years' time, I have no idea, besides maybe a masterpiece, how Hasbro are going to top these because they look wicked. Now, for reverse transformation, to start things off with, you're going to want to come here to these spikes and just detach them away from the chest piece. We can then pull that entire assembly backwards. You're then going to want to take the chest piece and gently kind of wriggle it as it will help detach those tabs from the slots that we have here on the top of the toes. Take these joints here, ratchet these sections backwards just to get them out of the way. Come to the underside, take these pieces and just flare those outwards as hopefully that should help in taking the kind of front part of the dyno in the back and splitting them, extending that kind of sliding joint that I showcased previously. We can now take both halves and just attach those like that. We can then proceed to use those ratchet joints, you know, just to kind of extend them, flip around. This is a lot easier this time around so we can just get our finger in that kind of hollow gaping hole, take the head, reverse this section here backwards and then that tab is going to peg into that slot so snap that in there take the toe flip this piece here forward and then fully extend out that knee joint we can now take the toe fold this upwards detach this leg swing this around and then at the same time utilize the ball joint and what's going to happen is that these two tabs are going to slide inside this leg so make sure that does snap into place we can then just close that up nicely and then like i said previously you're going to want to slide back in this piece so just snap that in there so it creates a nice streamlined thigh. Do the exact same here for this side. So extend that ratchet joint out, take this piece here, pull this forward, take the dino head, flip this down, snap that into place, flip out the toe, fully extend that knee joint around, take the leg, swing that around, fold the toe in, and then at the same time, use the ball joint so we can bring that leg down and just snap it over the top of those tabs. Snap that there into place, rotate here, at the waist so that the back is now facing the front. We can then compress this joint inwards, make sure the chest piece is nice and tabbed in. Take the shoulder joints, bring these here around just like that. Detach this piece and then snap that back into the shoulder. Flip out the bot mode hands and then just take the rear dino leg, flip the toe around, snap that into place and compress that inwards. And it should soft click. So one side fully done. Let's do the same here for this side. So snap that in there, bring the hand out, rotate the toe around, snap that into there, click that into place. And then for some finishing touches, you're going to want to come here to the tail, split it, make sure that that is snapped into place on either side, take this back piece. But before you do that, make sure you poke the head out, otherwise it will be a little difficult to do if you compress the backpack. So poke that out and then snap that in there, snap that in there. And just before I forget, take this section here and snap that back into place and there is Snarl fully transformed back into his robot mode. And wrapping up on this review for the Transformers Studio Series 86 Snarl, overall I think it's again another great addition to the Dinobot lineup. It looks fantastic in robot mode, you know, pretty much flawless. I like the paint, I like the details, I love the proportions and I think the articulation is on point. My only issue with the bot mode would be those kind of gaping holes that we have towards the base of the feet, but like I said previously, DNA Design are undeniably working fast in giving us some kind of panel filler. I think the transformation is very complex, you know, it does borrow certain elements from how we actually converted in the series, which is pretty sweet. 
three, and then it results in a fairly compact, but again, too inaccurate looking Stegosaurus, which I don't have too many complaints about besides the lack of paint. You know, considering with the past Dinobots, they really didn't skimp out on that gold paint. It is unfortunate to see the head and the legs kind of just unpainted orange plastic. You know, they do kind of stick out like a sore thumb alongside the rest of the Dinobots in the Dino mode. So that is a little bit of a shame. I do wish maybe the budget could have stretched just a bit further to truly make this the best version of Snarl that we've ever seen. But even with that off to the side, it still is the best mainline version. And, you know, it's a really nicely done figure. I'd love to get your thoughts down in the comment section below. What do you guys think of this 86 Snarl? Is it one that you guys plan on adding to the collection? And what do you guys think of the Studio Series Dinobots as a whole? As always, I thank you all so much for watching. And until my next video, I'll see you then. Thanks for watching.